Excellent. All right. So let's begin. So in our previous module, uh, we talked about how we can best secure our wallets. And we, we shared some very vital security tips as to how you can best secure your wallets. All right. And some of those things we talked about was diversifying our backup locations. So basically, this is a blockchain course, okay? Um, let me just do a short introduction for those who are new amongst us, all right? So if you're new here, let me see your hand raised up. I think I can find one new person here. Right, yeah, okay. All right, excellent. Okay, so you're welcome, you're welcome. So basically, uh, let me just give you an overview of the, the course. It's a blockchain wallet and transactions and security course, okay? So a blockchain transaction and wallet security course. So basically, it's a course concerning the blockchain technology, which is one of the most innovative and most secure technology as of today, okay? And of course, this technology can help us earn some money, but the line of thought, what we are helping our students understand in this free course is how best to secure the funds you have on the blockchain, the funds you have in your wallet, okay? So looking at our uh, curriculum, we have run about 12 to 15 modules and we're now in the sixth module. So today we're gonna to be talking about smart contracts and security, all right? Smart contracts, it's a very um, huge topic. I mean, without smart contracts, you know, blockchain transactions cannot actually happen, all right? so. We're gonna look at these um, smart contracts and the best way to actually ensure security with them. So this is actually a professional course on its own because an average person doesn't really have much to do with smart contracts, except you're a blockchain developer or you're a smart contracts programmer, or you know, you're know you into one of these you know, programming fields. And that's where you want to pay attention to this course more fully. But we're just going to do um, a surface information. So you just have the basics of what, you know, smart contracts entails. All right. So you're welcome to this module six of our comprehensive blockchain course. We'll explore the fascinating world of smart contracts and security. So first of all, let's begin. What are smart contracts? Now, why are they necessary, all right? Because these contracts, you know, help in processing auto payments. They enhance transparency on the blockchain and reduces the need for intermediaries, all right? And basically, all blockchain, you know, activity are based or built on smart contracts. So let's start off with understanding what smart contracts are, right? So at the core, smart contracts are digital agreements or contracts with the terms and conditions of the agreement directly written into code, all right? Directly written into code. Now, these contracts are not written in natural language, but I instead express in the programming, a programming language that can be understood and executed by computers. So think about uh, this for a moment. So what, what are contracts? What, what do you know contracts uh, to be? You know, a contract basically is an agreement, isn't it? Just give me a moment. Let me put up the read mode, all right? So contracts basically is an agreement where two or more people sign based on the terms and conditions of the contract. So if two persons agree to the terms and conditions of a contract, then a contract is formed. For example, the 
a tenancy contract, if you're living in a house that is not yours, you have to have obtained a tenancy contract from the landlord. Perhaps the tenancy contract says you're going to be paying 200,000 Naira per year for that house. If you agree with that, you would have to do what? Sign the contract. You see, but the problem with traditional contracts is that these contracts can be defaulted. All right. And now when they are defaulted, it requires an intermediary, a third party to help to fix things. All right. So maybe you have to go to the police, the police have to come and interfere. It's a long process. All right. But with smart contracts, you don't need to worry about all of that. Everything is programmed into a code. All right. So a programming language that computers understand is what is used to write or prepare smart contracts. We use examples to, you know, help us understand this. Now, one of the key features of smart contract is their ability to execute automatically when predefined conditions are met. All right, this automation eliminates the need for intermediaries or third parties to oversee and enforce the contract, all right? So with a smart contract, you don't need an intermediary, see? So I'm just gonna see if I can, you know, uh, put up a highlighting feature for this. Give me one second. View full screen mode. I think that should be better. Oh, no what I want. Okay. So yeah. Full screen mode. Oh yeah. So I can highlight this. All right. Excellent. I believe you can still see my screen. If you can, just let me know. Uh, can you all still see my screen? Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So now uh, we, we said one of the key features is that they, um, executes this contract automatically when predefined conditions are met. Now, these predefined conditions would represent our terms and condition of a contract. Now, let's use an example to understand. Now, for example, a rental agreement can be regarded as a contract. This is it not so? Now, let's look at a rental agreement from the perspective of being a smart contract, all right? Now, in the case of a smart contract, the code of the smart contract could stipulate that on the first day of each month, the tenant's digital wallet automatically transfers the rent amount to the landlord's wallet. Now, this transfer occurs without any manual intervention once the conditions are met. So now, in a situation like this, let, let's look at it more typically, okay? So I want to rent a house. All right, and I have to enter an agreement with my landlord. I don't want to do the traditional contract thing, all right? I want to use a smart contract. Now, it could be that I'm working, okay, and my wallet is where my salary is being paid to. So every month I receive my salary, all right? Now, a smart contract can be written that says, okay, on the first day of each new month, or on the first day of every January, if, I, if it's a yearly contract, okay? If it's a yearly contract, the first of January, the amount of the rent should be deducted from that, or from my wallet and be sent to my landlord's wallet automatically. So whether I'm aware it's the first or I'm aware I'm not aware it's the first, the moment it reaches first of January, as long as I'm still living in that house, that money leaves my wallet and goes to the landlord. That's just one typical example. Don't start think about, uh, thinking about, but what if I don't have enough money in the wallet and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all of that can be factored in. But the basic operation of how a smart contract works is that the moment that term and condition is met, it executes itself, all right? So there's no question of, oh, Mr. Mr. Michael, 
Mr. Briggs, come and give him my rent, chasing me with police here and there, right? So such a situation is resolved, all right? And that's why we said smart contracts are integral to blockchain technology because they enable trustless transactions. So it's in this case, the landlord does not have to, you know, trust me to give me the house because the, the contract has been written. So whether I like it or not, whether I want to do it or not, the contract has already been written. So the moment the conditions are met, it, it you know, it executes itself. All right. So instead of trusting each other as humans, because I mean, we're really funny when it comes to, you know, keeping to our promises. Rather, they trust the code in the underlying blockchain. Now, why is this much more reliable than humans? Because it's a code. The computer does not have a mind of its own. So I should say, okay, although this contract has been written, I'm not going to execute it. Oh, because I love Mr. Briggs. Oh, no, because I love the landlord or something. No, no, no. A computer doesn't have feelings, doesn't have, doesn't have emotions. There is no factor that could actually make the computer become biased, okay? So it's just code. So in this sense, these are basic, uh, this is quite a basic example of how smart contracts can work, all right? There has to be predetermined conditions, which is what we refer to as terms and conditions. The moment those terms and conditions have, that have been stipulated on the blockchains is met, the contract executes what it has been told to do whatever it is it has been told to do, all right? Now, we're gonna look at a few examples of um, smart contracts, okay? Sorry, I don't know why it's skipping too fast. All right, now examples of smart contracts, all right? The first example we have here is cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency transactions is one of the most or rather widely used example of smart contracts. Now, the most common example of a smart contract is a cryptocurrency transaction. Now, I won't talk about cryptocurrency. We're talking about digital money, money that exists only on the computer, which, of course, can be converted to fiscal cash. All right. Now, when you send digital currency from one wallet to another, what happens? That involves a contract. So the contract's code ensures that the funds are transferred securely and that the transaction is recorded on the blockchain. So let's say, for example, I owe you $100, okay? I want to send you $100. So the, smart, the, co the contract there is saying, okay, if Mr. A's address is correct, send Mr. A whatever amount he's putting in and make sure that that transaction is recorded on the blockchain and it's permanently recorded. Nothing can erase, change, edit that kind of transaction. Okay, so that's one very basic exam example. And that's why um, some you know, advanced smart contracts, by the time you impute an address that is not correct, it doesn't go through. It simply tells you, look, the address is wrong. Unlike the banking system where Perhaps you impute a wrong, maybe there's one number that is missing or something, and then it could actually go through successfully. So smart contracts are much more, you know, reliable in that case. Now, another area where smart contracts can be really utilized is in supply chain management. Okay. So smart contracts can be used to automate and track the movement of goods in a supply chain. All right, so for example, let's talk about um, a, a farmer, okay? A farmer uh, who harvests his goods would need to send or deliver it to wholesalers. And then the wholesalers will have to deliver it to the retailers. And then the retailers now sells off to the consumers, isn't it? Now, how can a farmer track to know who and who or how the direction or the, the direction of his goods. So smart contracts can be written to track the movement of goods. 
the farmer can know when you know the goods has reached the wholesaler. If the goods has reached the wholesaler, a, a, a blockchain can be you know designed such that both the wholesalers and the retailers are connected to the blockchain, such that if you know wholesaler A sells to uh, retailer A or retailer B, the farmer can track and know, oh, okay, these 17 bags of coconut that I harvested is with retailer A. Are you getting the point? And retailer A can know, oh, these goods, this coconut, this particular coconut I'm selling belongs to farmer A. And if anything is wrong, Retailer A can go back to Farmer A and say, ah, look, oh, this is my blockchain ID. This is how I know that this is your goods. Please, I noticed that this, 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 this is wrong. My customers are complete. You know, you know, these are possibilities that could actually happen to, uh, on a supply chain. And what about payments, all right? Now, a smart contract can also be used to release payments to a supplier when a shipment is confirmed as delivered, all right? So farmer A is sending 10 bags of coconut to retailer or rather wholesaler A, all right? Now, wholesaler A puts his money in the smart contract and writes a code and say, the moment the 10 bags of coconut reaches me and I confirm, release this money I have put here to sell a farmer A. See? So he doesn't have to start going to the bank and doing this and doing that. No. It's very easy. Put the money in the smart contract. The money cannot be taken if you have not confirmed that you have received the goods. So that's, you know, amazing uh, utility for smart contracts. Now, another one is insurance, all right? Now, smart contracts can be used. Smart contracts can be used to automate and track the movement or, or rather sorry smart contracts can streamline insurance pol uh, processes okay so in the event of an insured event such as let's say flight delay or car accident a smart contract can automatically trigger a payout to the policyholder based on predefined conditions so let's say it's a flight delay and you know there's a change of you know, arrangement. The moment you impute in the system that you have not, you know, moved from this country to this country, when you ought to have moved, it automatically sort of perhaps refund you your money and you can now book a new flight. You know, things like this. All of these are possible on the blockchain. Now, why do we prefer smart contracts over human intermediaries. Why would we prefer to use a smart contract to pay our rent other than, you know, having a written contract with a landlord? Well, there are four main benefits here. Now, the first one is efficiency. So smart contracts, they are very fast. They can automate processes, reducing the time and effort required for manual execution, all right? so. Imagine, you know, in a bank, all right, if everyone, you know, you know how it is in banks these days, you go to the bank, you have to stand in a queue, you have to, you know, write how much you're paying, use pen and paper, write those things. And, you know, you have to give to the person, they have to count, they have to type it on the computer, you have to now write, you know, before one person finishes it's about 10, 20 minutes. So what if a situation situation where everyone has a computer like like what has been done in the automated teller machine in ATMs, right? You know you can use ATM for deposit. You could use ATM also for withdrawal. So what if there are five or six ATMs? Everyone stands in queue. You just enter, impute how much you're paying in, slot in the money. It goes and it gives you a receipt. All of those are done with smart contracts because the computer must acknowledge how much came in and confirm that the amount you typed in is equal to the amount that you have put in. Once it confirms that, it gives you your receipt, the next person comes. So 
that reduces the time and effort required for manual execution and verification. So smart contracts are efficient. Smart contracts are also secure, all right? Now the blockchain is a very powerful, secure technology. Now the immutability, what was the immutability? We mean the blockchain cannot be tampered on. The blockchain cannot be hacked. The blockchain cannot be, you know, manipulated, sort of, all right? So such abilities blockchain has, you cannot convince the blockchain to steal money. You cannot deceive the blockchain to steal money. You cannot, you know, try to, you know, what's the word? Con the, the, the blockchain, you know, do something funny. It's not possible, all right? Because the blockchain is a computer. It doesn't have feelings. It cannot say, oh, I pity you. Oh, you're my friend. Okay, let me allow you to steal some money. No, it doesn't do that, all right? So because of that, it ensures that smart contracts execute as programmed, reducing the risk of fraud or dispute, okay? So someone cannot say, ah, please, execute this one for me now, even do. You know, the moment you give it the code, whatever is in the code is what it executes. As simple as that. So it's very secure. A third uh, benefit here is that it saves cost. I mean, imagine how much it would take you to go and bring, you know, a police to solve some problem for you. You know, maybe someone is owing you money or someone bought something for you, the person that refused to pay, blah, blah, blah. If you use smart contract, without, whether the person likes it or not, he will pay. But if the person doesn't pay, you have to incur the cost of calling the police, you have to cause, you know, the, the delay, the time wasted, all of that. So smart contracts eliminates, you know, such situations and helps to save cost. And another very important benefit of smart contract is trust, all right? So human beings, we know it's very hard to trust them, very hard, right? Because lots of us are not reliable people. We say one thing, we do another thing. But the blockchain is not like that. Smart contracts are not like that. The moment you put in a code on the blockchain, it executes. It doesn't try to favor one party against another, all right? So that is a very powerful benefit of smart contracts. Now, how does smart contracts contribute to blockchain security, okay? How does smart contract contribute to blockchain? So we earlier mentioned that blockchain is a decentralized ledger where transactions are being recorded. And these transactions are immutable in the sense that they cannot be changed, they cannot be edited, they cannot be deleted, they are just there. And everyone who has access to such a public blockchain can see all the transactions, can see the sender, the receiver, how much was sent, the time, the date, everything is right there on the blockchain. So smart contracts actually play a very important role in enhancing blockchain security. Because like we said, without smart contracts, we wouldn't even have a blockchain in the first places. So in the first place, so smart contracts is an underlying technology that makes the blockchain what it is. All right, now, one point or one rule uh, smart contracts have on the blockchain is that it, like we mentioned earlier, it increases automation, automated processes, okay? So smart contracts are essentially self-executing pieces of code that automatically execute predefined actions when specific conditions are met. And this automation is a fundamental aspect of blockchain security. So once it's automated, no third party can come in and stop the code. That's not possible. I mean, you know, it's just not possible. Someone cannot interfere with an ongoing execution of a code to stop it. It's never possible. Now, what are the benefits of automation and how, do, how does this, you know, add to the security of a blockchain? Now, automation, helps to reduce human error, all right? Something that a human being is doing. If, for example, let me let me give you an, 
insta an instance, all right? So if you're selling granite, <laughs> for example, you know, let's assume you're selling granite, okay? And you have to measure 100 naira granite. Will all the measurements of each of the, you know, you know, sacks or packs you have, will it be exactly equal? Of course, you won't be counting the seeds, would you? <laughs> no. You just pick up something, oh, okay, I think it's the same size. And, you know, there's no 100%, you know, accuracy. But with automated processes, that can be perfect. You know, now that's what smart contracts do for the blockchain. So it reduces that potential for human error. The error that can arise from humans on a traditional contract, all right? You can agree to do something with someone, for example, and tomorrow the person says, hey, when did, when did I sign that agreement? I was not the one, I was not there. We never talked about that, you know? They can just deny it to your very face. Well, blockchain, that doesn't happen, all right? That doesn't happen. So that's one advantage. Secondly, it also has immutable code. So once the code has been deployed on blockchain, smart contracts cannot be altered, which means if, for example, the contract has said, okay, pay Mr. Briggs this money on the 1st of January each year, you cannot edit that same contract and say, no, I change it. Don't pay him on the first again, pay him on the second. That's not possible. Or instead of paying him 100,000, pay him 1 million. No, that's not possible. You cannot change the code. The only thing that can happen is you can write a completely new code and deploy again. You get the point? So once the code has been deployed on the blockchain, it cannot be changed. So this is an advantage because it ensures that the terms and conditions of that agreed contract will be faithfully executed without the risk of unauthorized modification. So someone else cannot access, you know, access that code and change it. It's not possible, all right? Now, another advantage that smart contracts have uh, in blockchain technology is its transparency, all right? So smart contracts contribute to the transparency of blockchain systems. Now, in a public ledger, all right, all smart contract transactions that are recorded on the blockchain is accessible to any and everyone. So this ledger is accessible to anyone and can be audited in real time. So if I want to go back and see what was the first Bitcoin transaction that was ever made. That has happened more than 2019 now is roughly 14 years, correct? If I want to see that transaction that happened 13, 14 years ago, I can make that happen. I can go to the blockchain for Bitcoin and bring it up, all right? So everyone has access to it and it can be audited. If you say you send someone 200,000, there's the proof on the blockchain. You cannot go and change and say, no, I sent 2 million instead of 200, no. Or I sent 20,000, no, it's not possible, all right? So this high level of transparency helps to build trust among users and participants in the blockchain network, all right? I hope that's clear. Now, if for any reason you don't have clarity in what I'm uh, as to what I'm saying, please raise up your hand and I'll ask, I'll you know, enable you to ask your questions. Okay. All right. Clear. So another uh, advantage, you know, connected to transparency is that it has an immutable history. Like we said, what is recorded on blockchain cannot be changed. Nothing you can do to change that record on the blockchain. And real-time monitoring, mo participants can monitor the execution of smart contracts in real time, all right? If you say you're sending somebody money, someone can be on the network and be waiting and say, okay, you say you are sending it now, yeah, let me see. Online, 
in real time, the person can actually see that money coming exactly when you sent it. And this is very good because that enhances transparency, all right? Now we've talked about reducing inter intermediaries. That helps to reduce, you know, fraud that could result from human, you know, intervention. It also reduces transaction costs, all right? We know what it takes to, you know, send money from someone to another. Uh, for example, you want to send money to someone in the US or someone in Canada, you go to the bank, they, you know, take you through the Western Union process. So expensive, so much money, right? But when you use the blockchain, you save so much cost. You save it. I mean, you can even do a transaction for as much, uh, you know, as $1 million and spend only $1 as fee. That's amazing, right? Now, increased efficiency. Yeah, we said the automation of these processes helps, you know, or makes smart contracts efficient helping transactions to be done you know effectively on the and efficiently on the blockchain and these transactions can be really really fast i mean some blockchains have a speed of less than a second or, or of course not less than a second but right about one one second you transform money now that same instant the person is receiving it i mean isn't that cool that's really really amazing so these are some of the you know benefits that we talked about of smart contracts on the blockchain so we've seen the role that smart contracts play on the blockchain they enhance automation they uh, increase um transparency they also reduce intermediaries on the blockchain and now we're going to look at Vulnerabilities. This smart contract we've been talking about, oh, it sounds so cool. It looks like impenetrable. You know, it looks like it's nobody can do anything. Nothing can go wrong with it. Is it perfect? No. There are some loopholes here and there, some vulnerabilities that can occur in smart contracts. What are those vulnerabilities and how can they be fixed? Okay. Now, remember I said earlier, this course is a very vast one that is especially designed for programmers, blockchain developers, smart contract you know, um, writers, and all of that, okay? So if you find it too tedious, too difficult, please realize that it does not, it wouldn't really impact much on you if you're not a, blockchain developer or a smart contract you know a developer okay now or smart contract programmer now one vulnerability that occurs with uh smart contracts is what we call re-entrancy re attacks okay re-entrancy attacks are attacks that occur when an when an attacker exploits a vulnerability that allows them to repeatedly call a contract function from within or the same or with, from within the same contract. Okay. Now, uh, let me let me put a simple um, thing, you know, example that can make this uh, understandable. Okay. So now let's say you are. There is a limit, all right? There is a limit to how many transactions can come from one, you know, call, all right? Now, let me put it this way. It's like when you're trying to log into a website, all right, and you're putting your password and it's a wrong password. You put it again, it's wrong. You put it again, it's wrong that activity could actually cause the computer to malfunction, all right? So by the time you become, you keep that computer too busy with, you know, trying to identify and verify this information that obviously is wrong, that could make the computer sort of confused at that point in time. 
And that could open up a vulnerability for people to exploit. So in smart contracts, all right, it's possible for someone to, you know, repeatedly call a contract function. For example, the contract, one of the functions on a smart contract would be, okay, if Mr. A, if Mr. A receives these goods, send money to Mr. C, all right? Now, one function would be send money to Mr. C. The verifier is confirm, Mr. A has to confirm that he has received these goods, correct? Now the action or the function is send money to Mr. C, right? Now, a situation where someone begins to repeatedly call that function to send money to Mr. C, even when it has not been confirmed, multiple times can cause the contract or the computer itself to, you know, it's like, you know, when, when someone is trying to tell you many things at the same time, you become confused. Like, who are you listening to? You know, what is this one saying? What is that one saying? So that kind of thing can happen to a computer where it becomes now confused and begin to behave in a way that, you know, it was not programmed to, All right? So that's one vulnerability there. Now, what is the solution to this, especially for, for programmers, okay? Now, developers can use what we call the checks and effects interactions pattern to perform a check and confirm that, you know, this contract that is being connected to the, uh, you know, the already programmed smart contract is a good one. Because two different smart contracts can interact with one another. Okay, there could be a different smart contract that verifies if the seller has received the goods. There will be a different smart contract that actually pays the money to Mr. C. So if each or any of the other contract is has some you know funny code in it that could make it to misbehave, these check effect interactions can help to confirm the stability of such contract before interacting with it. So there's a, a, a pattern that is called mutex pattern that is used you know, when programming to lock the most sensitive sections of a code such that such reentrant calls are not performed. That's too much grammar, too much information for you. So I, I'll just do a summary of this because I'm very certain, okay. Okay, let me ask a question. If you understand reentrancy attacks and all I've just said perfectly, raise your hand. Let me see. Because I'm pretty sure all I've said is just mumbo jumbo. Oh, Dick William. Nice. Interesting. Okay. I see you. That's very good. Okay. All right. So, but I'm pretty sure for most of us, this is not our field, so to say. So it wouldn't really uh, benefit you so much, all right? So I'm just going to go through the summary of these entire vulnerabilities we are talking about, all right? So reentrancy attacks is there. Overflow and underflow vulnerability is also there. And this happens when inadequate checks, that is, sufficient checks are not made to ensure that the mathematical operations within the contract do not result in numbers exceeding their data types maximum overflow, okay? So the data types that are used in programming uh, are of different types. Okay, for example, uh, let me give you an in instance. So we have bits, we have bytes, all right? And if the mathematical operation of two you know, formulas result in a digit or an amount or a number that is supposed to be in bytes, all right? But the program equal, equates that to bits, 
that becomes a problem. Sorry, this is not really making sense. But <laughs> this is one problem with, you know, smart contracts. And how that can be done is by using libraries that are, you know, very much tested. And, you know, an example is given here, like SafeMap library, okay? That can be used to prevent such vulnerabilities. Making sure that the code you are writing, whatever, multi you know, addition, multiplication, you know, whatever logic you're writing to execute that code is having, you know, a perfect uh, uh, result at the end of the day. And you, of course, have to go about lots of testing with these contracts before actually executing them, all right? Now, another problem is unchecked external calls. And we talked about this in the first one, all right? So we want to uh, double check with the contracts or the smart, the smart contracts that your own contract is interacting with, okay? So before making an external call, these calls have to be validated and checked before making external calls. So there should be codes that should be there to handle such, you know, situation. If after checking the external contract and it does not meet up with the basic requirements of security, then it should ignore or avoid having interaction with such contracts. So that's basically the point. Now, another one is uninitialized, uninitialized, variables, okay? So variables are not properly initialized can lead to unintended consequences. Accessing uninitialized variables can result in unpredictable behavior or vulnerabilities that attackers can exploit, all right? So uh, I want to talk about initialized variables, all right? So a variable on, you know, in programming basically is a representation of a particular function, all right? So if that variable is not properly initialized, that can help the code to identify, this is what this variable stands for. This is what this variable stands for. It could make the computer become confused as to you know which is which, and that could cause it to begin to act funny. So when uh, programmers are, you know, writing their contracts, for example, Solidity, there is always a library. There is always a library that can guide, you know, programmers to write smart contracts correctly, all right? So that is one thing uh, they, as, uh, developers have to do. They want to ensure that their variables are properly initialized and they can use the library for any language they are using to be able to get it correctly. All right, so there, there are many more, many more. Time uh, stamp dependency, lack of access control, gas limitations. This one is one uh, vulnerability that is, you know, used majorly in, the, you know, smart contracts for cryptocurrencies. So yeah, that's one major problem. So um, mitigation strategies include code review. After writing your code, you want to inspect it, you want to test it, you want to you know, interact with the code as if you're actually doing a real life transaction or activity, just to make sure that every aspect, all loopholes are properly covered before, you know, revealing this code or, you know, the, the, the contract before giving it out for others to actually begin to use, okay? So that's what we'll talk, we'll talk about testing here, right? We have to test the code and make sure that it's working properly, including penetration testing that can help to identify security vulnerabilities in any smart contract. Now, we are also recommended as you know smart contract programmers uh, to use established libraries. So we want to use libraries that have you know vast frameworks and you know that have been used by many others in the space. So we don't, we don't want to be, you know, um, secluded to just one library. We want to make sure that we use libraries that are well known. And right? we give an example like SafeMath libraries, especially uh, when it comes to um, mathematical, you know, calculations. All right. So 
these are the basic, you know, things we have to know about smart contracts. Now, what I would encourage you to take as your takeaway point here is what we discussed at the outset, okay? Let me just go back to that um, um, page. We talked about what smart contracts are, the benefits, and what they can actually help us to accomplish, all right? So in summary, again, we said that smart contracts are digital agreements or contracts that include terms and conditions of the agreement. But with a typical contract is written with paper, pen, or it's typed and printed. But with smart contract, it is written digitally and it is written using programming languages. So it's basically code, all right? Now this code cannot, once uh, deployed, cannot be changed, cannot be adjusted, cannot be edited, all right? And nothing can interfere with their execution. That's what we learn about in you know, a smart contract. If your contract follows all the security protocols, all the uh, you know uh, security tips that you know the smart uh, blockchain developers should you know be aware of. Once all of these are implemented, I assure you nothing can you know change that smart contract. Nothing can stop it from executing, as long as those terms and conditions are met and it can be changed, all right? So that's it about smart contracts. And remember, this is a free course. So, um, you know, at some point I almost wanted to remove this module from the course because I wouldn't, I didn't really see how, you know, if it's really gonna benefit you guys. But I mean, I come to think about it, without smart contracts, then, you know, there is no blockchain, all right? so. I thought it wise for you guys to have an overview, an understanding of what these smart contracts are. So when you hear the term smart contracts, you know that these are contracts that cannot, you know, be changed. They cannot be edited and they help, you know, in transparency. They also help to remove, you know, third parties, you don't need to trust anybody to do anything as long as the contract meets, you know, as long as terms and conditions have been programmed into the contract, that's it, all right? It's also efficient, it saves cost, and it increases trust amongst those using the blockchain, all right? So, guys, if you, uh, if you go to your Google Classroom, you will have access to the entire course material. If you feel that this is something that you're really interested in, perhaps you want to even learn how to program, uh, you know, in uh, different languages, for example, Solidity, it's up to you. Feel free to, uh, you know, download the entire course material for module six, go through it. If you want to take this as a course, you go to our website. We have a course specifically for smart contract programming, all right? So you learn, uh, one, one of the languages you'll be learning is Solidity, how to write smart, I mean, that's the most common, commonly used language for programming smart contracts or writing smart contracts. So you're gonna learn how to use smart uh, Solidity to write smart contracts and of course, deploy on the blockchain, all right? So uh, you can go head over to our website, expand.net to register or apply for that course. And of course, you can have all that you need to do uh, there. Okay, so this would be all for today's class. So let's take questions. Um, sorry, it was more like a lecture. It wasn't more interactive because I mean, you know, this is quite deep for some of you, uh, I'm certain. So. Uh, our next uh, class is going to be much more interactive because, like we said, we're going to be wrapping up this course by the end of this month. So we don't want anything to hold us back. So please, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and let us, you know, hear your questions if you have any.
If you do have any, please kindly raise your hand. I can see you. All right. Uh, let me see. All right, go ahead, uh, Mrs. Rita. I think you have muted your mic. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I didn't really intend to ask a question because I plan to go through the note, note again. I don't oh. know if I rose and uh, put my hand. Sorry about that. It's all right. It's all right. Okay, so. Not too good. No problem. So it's already been posted in the Google Classroom, so feel free to uh, download it. All right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Most welcome. I'll do that. Right. So, yeah, I have uh, a question. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I. I'm trying to, I'm seeing a kind of relation of uh, cyber security to the blockchain um, uh, mm. technology we're learning. Right. So, well, the question um, I want to find out is, uh, after this, is there any um, course that will be relating to uh, cyber security or and then, okay, that's one one of the question. And then, uh, because I'll be interested in it, and um, I appreciate this one. It's very very educative, and uh, so that's basically that's my basic question. Anyway. All right, all right, yeah. So for the cyber security course, currently uh, we are not offering that now. Um, but okay. by the end of November, that should be included in the courses we're offering on our website, right? Yeah, so we are yet to get instructors for that. Once we do, they'll be listed on the website. And of course, you can always, you know, apply, especially <clears throat> being a student that has participated in our free course, we actually would give all these students a very healthy discount. So once the course is available to be posted on our page and you'll be fully aware of that. Okay. Uh, sorry, that uh, and also the coding you just mentioned. Will it be helpful towards that direction? What's that? The coding that you said we can, we can. Yes, uh, that that course is currently available. So, um, you know, smart contract development. So it, it of course involves a programming language like Solidity. Yeah. So that's available on the website. You can. Register for it now and get a forty percent discount on the on the price. All right. So if if that's that's okay, it's it's on the website. I'll just send it to, to the group. Um, it's expand.net. Expand.net. So you can always go there to access it. Access it. All right. Does that clear your question? Yeah, 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 certainly. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, too. Okay, so, yeah, and uh, I think everyone here has sent a request for the, the certificate for this course. So, yeah, you'll be getting a response to your emails towards the end of the month. All right? You'll be getting a response to your emails. So, thank you very much for your time, and see you in the next class. Thank you too. Most welcome. We appreciate. All right.